So you need to get those orders. It's a chain and it starts with the sale. The biggest names in e-commerce share tricks of the trade. From tools and software to strategies and growth hacks. Learn from the best and take your business to the next level. What are the actual tactical things that you're doing to attract people? Now your host, J.D. Krause. Hello and welcome back to e-commerce in the trenches. This is J.D. Krause and today I'm excited to have Halfdan Hansen uh, from jenshansen.com calling all the way from New Zealand. Welcome to e-commerce in the trenches. Hi, thanks for having me, JD. Absolutely. So it's like a little after nine o'clock in the morning there. Is that right? That's right. Yep. And springtime as well. Very cool. Oh, wonderful. We're obviously in fall. Uh, I just moved to Texas and so <clears throat> we're missing out on the Colorado fall colors. I'm waiting for the trees to turn here and and we're excited about that but it's like 85 degrees here so um anyway let's get down to business uh on e-commerce in the trenches we like to focus on attracting converting and retaining great customers and i'm super excited uh to talk to you your business uh, uh which was started by your father jens uh years ago has a wonderful origin story would you would you just kindly take us into how the company was uh, formed and, and birthed, and and then we'll talk about some fun stuff that has a lot to do with movies a little bit later. Sure, sure. So um, we've actually, I guess, uh, it's a family business. Um, I'm the second generation. I'm not. A, it's a jewelry business, and I'm not a, a jeweler. I'm a, a, a university trained engineer by background, and I I spent 15 years working in the international oil and gas industry. So I have more of a kind of technical management background um, but that can be quite good when you're running a business because you're not tempted to interfere with the, the guys who actually do the work and, and produce things. Um, I just try and, and help facilitate them do a great job. Now my dad was a traditionally trained jeweler and um, he graduated or started working for himself in about 1960 so we, we talk about ourselves as being since 1960 but I guess we really only got online and only got online in 2000 I think is when we registered our domain domain name we were we were early to the web um, and it ties back to the fact that my dad had been, although he had a traditional training as a jeweler, engagement rings, wedding rings, that sort of thing, he became known as the founding father of the craft jewellery movement in New Zealand, what you might call an artisan jeweller over in the in the US. So he was making one-off pieces, crafted pieces, and he was very much influenced by the Danish 20th century modern style. Um, and he was written about in art books, he won art grants and, and all that good stuff and, and was quite uh, critically well regarded, if, if a small audience, and he has works in the National Museum here in New Zealand, that sort of thing. But um, fast forward to 1999 and the art department production team of the Lord of the Rings movies from the young, then young um, and relatively unknown uh, New Zealand film director Peter Jackson, he um, sent out his team looking for the people who would create the various props and costumes that were needed for this kind of medieval fantasy epic that is Lord of the Rings and, and later The Hobbit. And when it came to finding a ring um, to represent the, the the central eponymous item of the story the in The Lord of the Rings, um, they naturally came to my dad. Um, we didn't it wasn't a competition or, or anything like that. He was just r so well known that they knew about him and they said, well, he was the obvious choice to make the ring. And they came to him and um, gave him a bit of a, a brief on what the ring should look like. Um, and it's, it's a very austere, minimal type of ring. And um, to a lot of people, it, it doesn't look special, um, but they're the sort of people who 
think that a Mazda and a Maserati are both cars. The you know it's it's in the it's in the quality it's in the it's in the weight and the feel and the presence of the ring. So the ring is almost in a Japanese minimal style, designed to be less is more, um, and it has a lot of gravitas and and presence on the screen. And um, and interestingly, in fact, it isn't engraved uh, at all in 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 the movies in the production. And there are only a few scenes in it that briefly appear as um, a special effect where there's engraving on the ring. But because all of the aftermarket movie uh, advertising um, always showed the ring with the engraving on it, people came to think that the ring always had engraving on it. But those true hardcore fans will know, and the people who saw the Hobbit trilogy later on will know that there are no, there's no engraving at all that appears in, in, in the Hobbit trilogy of movies. That said, I've got to say that the, the officially licensed, um, the one ring uh, replica ring that we make uh, for the Weta Company in Wellington has, that's our best-selling item, and that um, does definitely have the famous Elvish engraving on the ring. Um, so that's kind that's so cool. of the, the nutshell background of we were a jewellery business, and uh, we were involved in the making of uh, the one ring for the Lord of the Rings. Um, so, yeah, and, um, what should we talk about next? <laughs> <laughs> Well, something that jumped out to me, and uh, and I, I did ask your permission before we started recording, uh, that uh, had to be had to be hard, but also, um, I, well, you just tell me how you feel about it. The same year that Peter Jackson commissioned your father to make the One Ring for the Lord of the Rings, uh, he passed away. That's right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. What does that mean to you? Well. Um... It, it, it means a lot of things because um, obviously we miss him. Uh, it's been, you know, 18 years now. Um, and, and and I've got to say, we, you know, I, I didn't think that I'd be here now, 18 years later, still involved in some way with um, the Lord of the Rings. Um, but it was, it was... It was with a real sense of, of, of sadness, I think, that my brother and I were at the a premiere of the movie in our small hometown. And because and, you've got to remember that the movies didn't come out till December 2001 around the world. So that was kind of like two, almost three years or two years later. And our dad had, had made the, the ring in early 99, and he unfortunately got sick with cancer. He got pancreatic cancer, which is normally considered to be a bit of a death sentence, and, and he had about three months, and, and then he passed away in, in August of that year. So two years later, we, when we were at the movie premiere, it was with a real sense of sort of both pride and sadness to see the ring finally for the first time on the screen because we you know we we didn't know what it was going to look like so we were really proud but you know also obviously sad that um our father wasn't there with us to 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 see the ring um but i'm i'm obviously also glad that um it's left a, a real popular legacy for him um he was he was a you know he was a contemporary artist and and, and a bit of a modernist so i think he would probably be having a wee chuckle in his in his grave if, if not spinning to know that um he's remembered today primarily for making the world's most famous ring um as a as a as a, <laughs> a an icon of 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 popular movie culture so um, it's it's bittersweet <laughs> let's say that Absolutely. Well, I lost my mother uh, last September, and so um, had to have been bittersweet uh, yeah. for sure for you. The uh, with the bit of fame um, and and your company's involvement, your father's, your family company's involvement in the in the movie. What did that mean to your business? And and. Do you feel like it helped you uh, drive traffic? Was there a lot of uh, was there a significant uh, boost in organic traffic to your site? No, it, it, Did it break? Yeah, absolutely. Any... Yeah, I mean, okay. I think I, you know, I, I, I think I mentioned before that we we were early to register our domain main on the web in two thousand, but you know, because of uh, we we have a, a a physical store and uh an online store to support it and 
we weren't able to tell anybody about our involvement in the movie for confidentiality clause reasons until the movie came out. And it was after the movie came out that we started being approached by people by email from all around the world saying, hey, you know, can we buy one of these rings? Uh, can we? Can you make us a replica and you can make us a ring the same as the ring in the movie? Um, mm-hmm. So we did get involved in, um, in making... Um, rings for people and we set up a very quick website to start with which was kind of like a one page order form type website with a limited sort of product offering and we started selling our our movie rings um to people and so our internet business started then if you like um probably 2002 i guess most accurately was when we were first starting to to make rings and the movies came out over three years and we also had people coming into our store because we had a lot of tourists coming to New Zealand. So it's a combination of that. And so it's a growth story from basically starting from nothing with uh, interest, organic interest in a product, people finding us, and then us finding our way over the years as to, okay, do we start um doing some sort of SEO on our website to help people find us? Do we start doing some AdWords advertising? Much later came Facebook advertising, moving to a proper e-commerce. We went through a couple of iterations of e-commerce type stores till we settled on Shopify. Um, So now it's a very different business and, and we've grown effectively from uh, the internet being maybe less than ten percent of our business to now it's 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 around fifty percent of our business. So it's 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 a significant business in in itself for us. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, definitely it, it had a huge impact, but it wasn't overnight, and it, it it had been a slow growth, and there's been a lot of incremental organic tinkering that we've done um, in order to to improve things. Nice. Are you uh, actively spending money on Google AdWords now going after the one ring uh, keywords or any long tail uh, and, and or Facebook? What are, you, what are your major sources of traffic? Are they organic? Are they paid? And if so, where, where is that coming from? Okay. Um, well, our major sources of traffic are organic because these days, if people go online and were to type by the one and it varies obviously depending on geography um, it's as you know just because you type it in your own browser doesn't mean that that's what someone sees in another country or or location or, or personal browsing history but we believe that we've got a pretty good um, uh, natural organic uh, reach for people who are looking to buy the one ring or you know who made the one ring or you know, best one ring reproduction. Um, And we also have kind of these side niches that we've discovered because we discovered people were looking for information about um, elvish wedding rings. Or, you know, we we sell a version of our ring, we call it an elvish inspired wedding ring, you know. Um, We have to be a bit careful because we, we only have a few items that are official, uh, you know, officially licensed and approved Lord of the Rings uh, merchandise, and we have to repre- uh, respect the intellectual property of, of of the movie company with anything else we do that, you know, where people are coming to us because of our fame and, and involvement with the movies. We just can't call everything that we do. We can't slap a Lord of the Rings label on it willy-nilly. Um, so we do... Uh, Google AdWords, we do Facebook advertising, we do Facebook retargeting, um, but I would have to say that you know the great majority of the traffic to our site is organic. And uh, a couple of years ago, what we it was a really interesting story for me was that we had we know that people are interested in Elvish, and we had people asking us to engrave little messages written in Elvish, which is a made-up language, by the way. Um, and we put a little translator page or transcriber page on our website um, which helps people type in you know letters in english and see what they would look like in an elvish curly script and we 
kind of found out the next time I looked at our website traffic, it had doubled. And, and I thought that was just because I was a good guy and people loved me. But um, actually, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was actually because we found that all of a sudden, the busiest page on our website was a page that was hidden deep inside. It wasn't really even linked to in our navigation, but Google had found it and decided, I guess because we had some reputation and credibility uh, from our actual involvement with the movies, and so we overnight pretty much became the number one hit for people who were looking for Elvish Translator. And that probably meant a heck of a lot of people who were actually looking, I don't know, 12 year old high schoolers looking to do their project or something at school or people who wanted, I think a lot of people are looking at people who want an Elvish tattoo because I believe those are very popular. Um, and so we're getting a lot of probably what you call a lot of traffic, but it's probably quite unqualified. Um, so the first thing that we we sort of thought was, OK, how do we, you know, how do we filter out the people on going to that page who might actually be interested in our product? So we started uh, linking the product through from our, 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 our homepage menus. We started putting stuff on the page, explaining what this tool was and wasn't. We we warned people not to get tattoos with it because you know we it's it's um you know it's not a real language folks and um <laughs> there are lots of different um interpretations as how best to do it and we didn't want to be responsible for for someone sort of putting something on their body that that would be hard to take off um but um it's it's something where now what we do is we offer on the page a little um, a white paper for people to download to teach them to write. We call it, you know, learn how to write Elvish in five minutes. It's kind of Elvish 101. And we then start um, giving people, we deliver that by Infusionsoft and have a, a little sequence in Infusionsoft where we then start to soft market to them to explain more about Elvish and to sort of ask them if, you know, are, have you ever imagined what would it be like to have your inspirational quotation, a message to a loved one on our, what we call the world's most famous ring on, on the, um, the exact same shaped ring uh, made by the same guys who made the, the ring for the Lord of the Rings movies. And so we probably get about a, a 1% conversion rate on that um, but the thing is of course that wedding rings are you know solid gold wedding rings are a, a more expensive item than a souvenir ring so our average sale is probably around a thousand dollars so it's not a huge volume but um, it's a significant enough price that um, you know each sale is 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 we're grateful for and, and it's it's worth getting um, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Yeah. I, I actually saw the Elvis translator tool on your site and I was going to ask you about it. So I'm so glad that you brought it up. Did you have more to add about that? Uh, no, I mean, it just, I mean, it, it, it ties in. And I think what, I don't know, my experience with um, running an e-commerce business is that you, you have to respond to what, you have to respond to what happens. And, you know, if, if your website is is isn't selling so much you know is it uh in our case we've we 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 noticed that um we had great sales on our website in um kind of may june july august and then all of a sudden it fell off a cliff and we wondered why and then we worked out it was because while it was our quiet winter period here in new zealand it was actually the spring summer in in uh, the us and the uk and that was if you like the wedding season and so I learned mm -hmm. not to be too distraught and downhearted when the sales um, dropped off in, um, in uh, you know, sort of September, October, the time period we're in now. And then they tend to pick up again in, in November, December. So um, there is some businesses are seasonal and our business is not it's so much a repeat business business. We, we don't sell someone a wedding ring and then go back to them 
six months later and asked them if they're still married and <laughs> do they want another wedding ring. Um, so, <laughs> so we do have to rely on constant new business, but also at the same time, you know, we've known for, for years and years that we needed to do better at figuring out some way of generating repeat business. So we did also use another Infusionsoft sequence to, um, and this is um, the, based on the template of the Revenue Conduit slash uh, Unific um, system um, of uh, repeat business, which involves um, a, a sequence in Infusionsoft and tracking people through and systematically going back to your customers, talking to them, emailing them, asking them how they found the product and um, suggesting new products. So we we have that running now. It, it ticks away in the background. We, we make various offerings to people to encourage them to, to come back to us and buy something different uh, or even to, to talk to us about their experiences and, and, and that can help in terms of generating reviews. If, if you're automatically emailing uh, someone to ask them how they like the product and if they come back and say they really love the product, then that's a great person to, to ask uh, for more information from, ask if they're willing to do a review. And, and in fact, using that, I'm, I'm, I've kind of sidetracked here, but using that principle, we went from zero reviews on Google to I think we're up to about 150 something five star reviews. And they're all glowing, red hot, fantastic reviews um, uh, from our customers. So that really helps support our reputation. So in terms of the the asking for a repeat business sequence that the Infusion Guys Soft Guys, um, sorry, the Revenue Conduit Guys helped us set up in Infusionsoft, that also generates about a percent uh of of conversion but again those conversions are they're all good great sales and anything that's running in the background 24 7 that you don't have to to look at that's what that um uh, e-commerce uh, automation is is all about so it, it's all helped us they're all bits of the puzzle that have helped uh improve and provide a, a steady flow of work because at the end of the day this this stuff is is being made in our workshops um we get the order whether it comes in off the shop floor or, or through the internet and then someone has to actually make this product it's not a virtual product it's a real physical product made made here in New Zealand and um, it can take some time to make and we have to track it through the workshop and then reconnect it back when we fulfill it back. And we also have shipping issues. We're, we're shipping a, a valuable product from the other side of the world. So we're having to get on with, with FedEx and um, customers sometimes have an unrealistic expectation about how quickly. We, we're amazed constantly at, at how people will come to us at what seems to be the last minute. And says, "Oh, I want you guys to make my wedding rings." And you know, we would have thought that, that they would have thought about that a little bit earlier, rather than a week before their wedding or, or something. But um, <laughs> at the at the same time, we also have that conundrum of, you know, we we will pull out all the stops if we can, because a we, you know, we the guys getting married, we we want them to have a wedding ring. We don't want to lose a sale because we're not able to deliver on time. Um, but it's also about trying to manage expectations from the beginning. If, if we can get customers to understand that, hey, look, this, this product is actually handcrafted one off for, for your unique finger size and your custom engraving that you require, it's made by real people, not robots, um, then, you know, the more time we have to do that, the better. That's good. That's great. So on your site, you have a social proof tool. I was curious, uh, what is what is powering that? Is that Sumo or FOMO or Proof? It's you, FOMO, you know the, the, the one that pops name? up and tells it's you FOMO. that someone's bought something. Yeah. How long have you had that running on I, your site? Look, you know, I, I am a very early adopter of technology. So... I'm such an early adopter of that particular tool that I was there from the days when it was called Notify and I was there from the days mm -hmm. when it was the only tool like that on the market and I even had jewellery websites in the US coming to me saying, hey, what's that tool? Where can I find it? Because mm -hmm. it was really hard to find in the Shopify app store. Um, you know, I don't know if you've ever tried to find something in the app store. It, it can actually be quite hard to know what, you know, know what an app is if you're trying to look 
from it <laughs> just from from scratch um so yeah so that was we were an early adopter of that we love it and just in the last six months or so they have really turbocharged it and taken it to the next level they've, they've renamed it fomo uh, i'm a big believer in, in all the different shopify apps and i'm, I'm famous with all the web developers that we've worked for as having the most apps of anybody <laughs> installed in my Shopify store and that's not necessarily a good thing because um, it does mean that it causes all sorts of headaches and slowdowns and um, <laughs> it can cause problems with themes and break things um, so you do have to be a little bit careful about it but um, I think FOMO is a really amazing tool and they they are just doing a, they're really responsive in their support and uh, I don't have any shares in them but I wholeheartedly recommend it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, interestingly enough, I'm the same way. Uh, not to be not uh, not to jump on your bandwagon, but um, we were using it before it was named FOMO, also. Yeah. And I love it. I think uh, the little reminder of just a little social push. When I was on your site earlier today, somebody in Brazil bought a uh, a beautiful silver. Uh, ring and of course I saw that flash up in the upper left on my uh, desktop and I had to click on it and go on over and visit that product so uh, it does a great job time on site and internal uh, navigation in and around the site uh, we we have we have really seen it increase time on site and conversions on our on our store as well I'm, I'm sure that you have as well yeah yeah, it's always hard to know. I mean, it's, it's that old chestnut of, you know, which 50 cents of my advertising dollar actually works. But, you know, I just intuitively get that that what it does, um, you know, when we talk about social proof, when I, you know, when I talk about social proof, um, I think it's like, to me, it's, I've got someone potentially who knows nothing about me. They don't know our backstory just because my dad is world famous in our hometown uh, certainly doesn't mean he's, you know, he's really world famous. Um, and we get people looking to spend what could be, you know, thousands of dollars. Um, you know, who's going to send me thousands of dollars over the internet to a, you know, a foreign country for most of our customers? And I find that uh, FOMO as a, as a social proof tool, what I love about it is that it's actually popping up and it's showing, hey, these guys are, these guys are alive and kicking. This isn't just some dead website um, that was <laughs> made two years ago. And, you know, if I place my order, is it up to date? Is there anybody on the other end? Is my money going into a black hole? But they can actually see that, hey, look, these guys are they're ticking, they're selling, they're selling these products and they are shipping them to countries like mine or um, all around the world. And I think that's that it's that trust stuff. And I'm sure that, you know, a large part of the reason that we've been successful on the web is that we, we're piggybacking on the reputation and credibility that we've got um, from being involved uh, in the Lord of the Rings project from my father's, um, you know, backstory history in, in New Zealand and reassuring people that, you know, we are, we're legitimate and um, that we, we if, if people read the reviews, you know, the, the, you know what the hardest thing is to, to sell, I think, is, is to sell that you give great service because I know. If everybody says they give great service you know, everybody says they get great service and everybody just dismisses it and takes it for granted. But, the you know, the fact is that if you read any of those 155 reviews, five-star Google reviews that we've got, the overriding theme is that our service is really amazing. And, you know, I don't think our service is amazing, but, you know, I think I know why people think our service is amazing. And that's because we are humans and we talk to people. <laughs> no, so, and we can the 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 you know I, unlike probably a lot of e-commerce owners, we've got an advantage because we are only selling a few items a day, right? Um, so when you're only selling you know, you know 100 200 items a month, it means that on your on your e-commerce store it means that you can. Um, 
really be giving uh, your online customers the attention that they need. And you know that's because we're selling a high, a high dollar value product. Um, and so people love that a real person, whether it's a, you know we have a chat service which is a, a real person. We mm-hmm. we answer our emails typically you know within a working day, uh, sometimes sooner because of the time zone differences, and we know what we're talking about because all the, the you know the people are working here on site. They know the product intimately, and they give intelligent answers. I've I've got to say that you know we're English speaking, so we give our answers in English, and and that's probably why most of our customers are in Australia, England, the US, Canada, um, but we sell a lot to Europe as well. Um, so I think people really, really, really appreciate being able to correspond quickly with someone who knows what they're talking about and, and can answer all their questions. And, and I do appreciate that not all e-commerce businesses are going to be able to do that if they're trying to shift high volumes of, of a lower value product. Absolutely. How do you view competition? When I, when I do a Google search on Lord of the Rings rings or the one ring uh there's all kinds of price points and i'd be particularly interested in how you view amazon um but but competition in general on that product and and amazon if you could yeah well okay i mean i mean obviously we as as a jewelry business we make all sorts of things not just um our you know our official lord of the rings related products but uh, you know thinking about the e-commerce it's true that in in our our e-commerce business the majority of that is in some way related to um, the Lord of the Rings and when I you know we make a US $99 gold plated um, souvenir style ring it's an official ring that we make for the Weta company um, in Wellington, it, we we call it the world's uh, most accurate replica prop ring, um, and we are certainly aware that you can go on Amazon or anywhere else and probably find something that purports to be the same thing for for ten bucks. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. we and again, what I'll I'll go back to two things. I mean, one is that the sort of unfortunately or fortunately those replicas that we've seen, they don't actually take the trouble to rip off our exact design um they don't get the writing right i mean i don't know how stupid they are you know if you're gonna if you're gonna replicate something well you would want to actually make an exact replica of it they just sort of take any old ring and put some writing on it um which is not to say i mean what i'm talking about is the ring that we made for the movie and right so you know, I don't think that those people necessarily, the people who are buying from us are the people who want to buy the exact same shaped ring that was in the movie from the guys who actually made it. And we we have two types of customers. We have the customers who are buying the, if you like, the, the, the lower price point souvenir type thing. And then the people who are looking at actual solid gold wedding rings you know, there are people who want a wedding ring, and typically people have, I think, a lot of emotion around a wedding ring. They want something made, hopefully, of solid gold that's going to last a lifetime, that's going to be adjustable and sizable, made of traditional materials that someone can service and work on over the years. Um, so I think the most important thing in the coming, you talk about competition, Um I think the most important thing and where we've had the most success on our website is really focusing on our value proposition. Um, And I'm a huge fan of the guys over at marketingexperiments.com. And I really believe in their um, value proposition methodologies. Um, And this idea that, you know, the most important thing that you can, and I, you know, I'm not perfect at it. But I really believe that in their idea that you, in everything you do, every piece of communication, every page on your website should be answering in your prospect's mind the question of why should I buy this particular widget or service from you and not your competitor. And Mm -hmm. so it's about getting clear on what your value proposition is. And, um, you know, and also as an e-commerce owner, you, you can't do all of this stuff yourself. And I... I was actually, the guys at Marketing Experiments approached us because our website had some 
um, popularity said hey do you want to work with us and I'd say yeah hey that's great but I probably can't afford it and guess what I couldn't afford it you know because <laughs> you know you, you have to be spending you know six figures on advertising and probably seven figures or more on revenue before they'll get out of bed and talk to you but the great thing about the guys at marketing experiments is they work with the bigger companies they find out what really works and then they publish it all for free um, so all their stuff is available. I mean, they have paid products as well and trainings, but um, they actually publish all the stuff in in papers and research, and um, they have uh, videos, and it is just an amazing resource. But you know, the catch with all of those things is, and and we know that with people who give away free information, is that people just don't have the time to learn it and implement it, and it's it's sometimes easier to get someone else to do it for you so I went looking for someone who could help me you know delineate my value proposition and I went searching uh, and looking for someone using the same language as the making and experiments guys and I found a guy in Sweden uh, in Finland sorry named Peter Sandin and I've had a long relationship with him he's a, a relatively young guy who just has an amazing ability to define clarity um in in one's messaging and, and the beautiful thing is when you can clearly articulate what it is that your product uh, does and, and sets you apart once you've got that then you can use that in all your marketing um, it can help define it, it helps the ads write themselves if you like and mm -hmm. if i were to um you know, on we have a page on our website about Elvish inspired wedding rings, and I we've we've followed a, a template that the marketing experiments guys um, found and and put out there as being, hey, look, this is our recommended template. We think this works, and um, on the page it basically has a title, Elvish inspired wedding rings. And then the, the subheadline is the most authentic and unique Elvish wedding bands on the planet. Um, there's a, a little picture on the right hand side that shows what the product is. Um, and then there's some, some feature points. And we say it's the only one with the unique replica ring shape. Um, it's exclusive to us and it's custom engravable and you know the the subtext is to have the jewelers who made the the movie ring for peter jackson's movies handcraft your own uh, unique wedding ring so that's you know i've taken a long time to say that but that's kind of the text on the page and i think it really it's you know it's not a slogan it's not a buzzword it's not a, an outlandish claim it's factual and it's telling people that hey you know this is these guys actually made the rings for the movies they can make it for you it's exclusive to them because it's about uh, the marketing experiments guys will tell you that it's about um, uh, exclusivity um, uh, desirability and credibility those are the, the that's the holy grail uh, trifecta so if you have all of those three things um, you're onto a winner now we have something that's arguably exclusive because only we made that particular version of the ring you see in the movie and and therefore we can claim the exclusivity of of the shape um it's we have the credibility from all the reputational uh information that's out there it's you know it's it's, it's in the written record that we were involved with with it um, and the desirability you know it is a niche obviously it's not um, something that every everyone wants and I you know I love the the marketing experiments guys uh, use a, an analogy of look uh, the, the of the the hair loss snake oil salesman you know if you go out there and claim to have right. a product that will instantly reverse hair loss male pattern baldness whatever you want to call it then um, that is going to be uh, highly desirable probably exclusive because no one else is claiming that but it's not believable it's not credible um, and so most small businesses will have one or two of those claims to fame and very unusually would they have three and therefore your challenge as the with your marketing hat on 
as an e-commerce business owner is to try and figure out, okay, what, you know, my products and services, how can I describe clearly what they are um, so that my customers know why they should choose me over my competitor and also so that it's clear to them and to answer those questions is, you know, is this, is this believable, is this credible, is this desirable? So if your products or services uh, don't tick all of those boxes, then you better figure out um, a different product or service or you better figure out a different way of uh, painting your message because um, that's the thing that's ultimately going to have those people choose you over over something else. Very good. That's that's like a uh, there's people that charge three thousand dollars to go to a seminar to get the marketing lesson that you just dropped on us. <laughs> yeah, that was good stuff. Yeah, it's really good. Um, a couple. I mean, just a couple more technical things on your site as it pertains to growing your list is. Uh, I love your newsletter opt-in and where you have the simple survey uh, questions underneath of it. How do you leverage that to uh, be able to well, segment and better talk to I, yeah. better Look, talk to your, your people? So you know, I'm going to be honest and, and say that I'm embarrassed to say that we don't use it as much as, as we should. You know, we, you know, it's one of these things we... That's great. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know that in theory, you know, there's lots of things that we know we should be doing on our sites. Um, we know we should be doing all these things, but we there, there are only so many hours in the day. There's you know only so much budget you can put on things. So we've built the form. We appreciate that you know the more questions you ask people, you increase the friction and the and you know decrease the likelihood that people are are, are going to do things. But you know we know we should have it, so we're kind of persisting with it. But the great thing is at least. You know, the fact that they're segmented in there, as long as I don't leave people too long, because obviously if you leave people too long, then your list gets old and stale and it doesn't really matter anyways. Um, but at least we're acquiring the information so that, you know, when we build the next sequence in Infusionsoft, um, we can... Um, we can, you know, utilize that information because it's clear that we do have a lot of people that are... Um, not necessarily, we a lot of people are interested in Lord of the Rings, but we also have a lot of people who are maybe more interested in the bridal market or what we call a contemporary jewellery market. And they're three quite different things and they don't necessarily overlap. Um, I mean, what I will say, I mean, one thing that we've done along those lines, which we are actually doing actively now, is for, a long, for the longest time in our store, we, we recorded people's customer details when they came in the store and bought something you know because they buy an expensive product and we want to be able to service it for them or they might have an insurance claim so we said to people look, we called it our insurance register and said look you better give us your name and address and email um, so that god forbid if you were to lose something we would know what it was because you know we've been in business for so many years and we'll have people come in and say oh my god your dad made this for me 25 years ago and it got stolen in a robbery and and we say, oh, okay, what was it, you know? And they say, well, it was a ring, and it was made of gold, and it had some curvy bits on it. And so we've learned <laughs> a lesson over the years that, you know, you need to know exactly what you sold them. So for the last 15 years, we've recorded pretty much every sale, unless you've got someone who just doesn't want to give you the information. We, we record that information in our store. But one of the things we wanted to ask them when we were asking that is, you know, what's your birthday and what's your anniversary? Because that would be great to be able to remarket to people on their birthday or on their significant other's, you know, anniversary. But ask, that's kind of a personal question sometimes, or it starts feeling invasive when you're asking people that um, in a retail store setting. And, right. you know, we knew we should do it. It was on the form. It was kind of random whether people filled it out or not or whether we asked for it or not. Um, but then we hit upon this thing and we just said, okay, well, let's, we, we, we email people their receipt. You know, one of the reasons for asking for, you know, uh, I mean, this is a, a hybrid of e-commerce and, and um, bricks and mortar, but we, we was, one of the reasons we can give for getting people's email is that we need to email you your receipt for insurance purposes, whatever else. So now what we do is when we email the receipt, it gets uh, BCC to our, our sort of support inbox and we have a Zapier um, 
uh, zap, I guess they call them, um, that notices when the specific template is coming through, it can see that it's a, one of these client receipts. And it starts them off in a welcoming sequence. Um, and we, we, we're testing it in our physical store, but we are also going to extend it into uh, using Unific. We're going to do it in our, our online store. Um, but it's worked out uh, surprisingly well um, because what we do is we, we thank them for purchasing and we immediately ask them, uh, you know, whether we, we want to get to know them more and would they be happy to share their birthday with us. Um, we don't even say what, we, we, we A, B tested a few different options and, and we found that we got as good or, or even better results not even trying to bribe them but just saying, hey, look, just share your birthday with us so we can get to know you better. And a, a huge amount of people are volunteering this information to us. Um, and so we then it gets filled in via email in an Infusionsoft form. It's so it's tagged against their name now in our database. If they answer that, we actually somewhat cheekily then say, hey, that's great. Would you mind optionally sort of telling us what your partner's name and birthday and, and anniversary is? Because, you know, for a jeweler, that's the, you know, the holy grail is to have um, the name and <laughs> the name and, well, if we had name, address and, and permission to, to I guess, market to someone's spouse and, and suggest things to buy for their significant other, that would be great. It's probably going a bit far. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, you know, we get a surprising amount of people who are giving us their anniversary information and we're going to be able to use that to use Infusionsoft to remind us when it's time to... Uh, you know, congratulate people on their birthdays and maybe make some sort of offering to them, whether it's, you know, just ask them to bring their, their if they're a local customer, ask them to bring their jewellery back and, and we'll clean it for them, you know, have it looking beautiful. And that's a free service that, that we do. So it allows us to reconnect with them, show us what, show them what's new. Um, and with things like anniversaries, you know, people don't mind being reminded that they've got an anniversary coming up. Um, maybe they want to buy a gift from us, but maybe they want to buy it from someone else. That's that's great. But, you know, I was um, really pleasantly surprised that that has worked so well for us. And it's, 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 it's you know, it's a kind of non-invasive way to uh, find out more about your customers, get them to sort of self-service the information to you. And, you know, you started, us, started off asking me about the form with segmentation. How can we... Uh, use that, uh, or how do we use that? Well, we you know we know we should use it. We are going to use it. We promise we're going to we're going to do a better job with it in the future. <laughs> but um, we are getting good results with with that other uh, birthday and anniversary information form. So 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 that's a good example. So we we're believers in doing it, but you know, it's it's just uh, picking the time and place when you're ready for it. And, and you've got to have an offering. You've got to sometimes you know what you want to do, but then the question is, well, what are we actually going to offer these guys? Um, right. Because it's not just, you know, we used to run ads uh, sending people to parts of our website and then we realized, God, our website is just, it's not, you know, it's not uh, on brand enough. It's not giving a good enough message. So maybe we're better off not spending money on advertising and sending people to a page on our website that's not actually going to convert them or, or show us off in the best light. So it's, it's all of the all of the pieces in the puzzle have to work together and you've only got a limited budget and so you've got to concentrate on the low hanging fruit and i guess the you know the the really important thing is you've got to say well okay what can we do that that is actually not going to cost us too much to do that we can in some way measure the result and most importantly you know can it help us generate a little bit more revenue so that we can then use that revenue to do some of the bigger cooler things that we've always wanted to do because I'm kind of loath as a business owner to go out and spend a hundred thousand dollars on a new shop fit out or a new website or uh, something with all the bells and whistles with no real proof that it's going to generate more revenue um, other than you know some experts say so and I mean I, I love experts and, and you know I believe in them and if I had endless budget I'd, I'd just tinker and, and make the coolest greatest website on earth but uh, and I maybe I even wouldn't be worried if it didn't generate any revenue but I you know I live in the real world and and I, I've got to be responsible for stewarding this business and so the decisions I take I, I'm, I'm typically pretty cautious and try and spend within within our means well I think you have a beautiful site and from one business owner to another 
Um, it's kind of, I grew up on a ranch in Nebraska in the States, obviously. And, you know, my dad always used to say one of the reasons that ranchers work seven days a week is, uh, because there's always more to do. Yeah. And, and we have to be careful as e-commerce store owners and you have a brick and mortar presence as well. I mean, we can, we can always do more. There's always more optimization. There's always uh, a better way to lay out the site and different things to do. But what I love is what you said in a roundabout way was the total 80-20 principle or even 90-10. What are the What's the 10% that I can focus on that's going to move the revenue and move our brand and and create the experience for our visitors, for our customers, for our prospects uh, that we that we want to uh, that, that our best foot forward. What's the experience that we want to have with them? And obviously, an experience that would lead them to the next step of pulling out their credit card and making a purchase. Uh, because we all have to eat, yeah. right? <laughs> and, uh, and 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 so I love that you do live in the real world. We're running we're running close on time here. I've got a couple quick sure. questions. Um, how I'd like to end our conversation. It's been wonderful, by the way, Half Dan. Um, Thank you. Number one, what what is the biggest mistake that you've made in business? You've been in business a while. Would you share with us a big blunder? Uh, we have to begin. Um, <laughs> look, I, I mean, I think the this isn't really an e-commerce thing so much as a general thing. I think people are the hardest thing, and 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 the biggest blunders is, is is not realizing when something's not going well with a with a with a staff member. But I think everybody's got that, and that's kind of off topic. I think. I mean, I think in terms of. Um, I, I, by, by the way, I really don't think so. Okay. Yeah, well, because then, yeah, I mean, I mean at, I think, one, yeah, at, at one time we, yeah, go ahead. You know, okay, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe because because it's about people, you know. And I think one of the great attractions of e-commerce, uh, especially when you're starting out, is you can do a heck of a lot of it yourself. You don't have to be involved by pesky employees or even pesky customers. You, you know, you're somewhat <laughs> um, separated. Um, by between you know the, you've got the computer and the, or the web between you and them, but um, cust you know if you don't service a customer right, they can create a lot of trouble for you for your reputation and brand, and if you have the wrong employee or the wrong service provider, you can spend you know I've there was a, a a company, great local success story company here in in New Zealand that was sort of punching above its weight, selling a a new super sexy Instagram type social media tool, um, and I allowed myself to be talked into spending you know a couple of thousand dollars a month with them, um, mainly because they were targeting really high end corporations and not focusing on small business, but. Because we were, they were kind of local to us. We got involved when we thought it'd be really cool, and we spent this money with them. And so, you know, th there was no obvious way to measure the the revenue. It looked really cool, but you know, we didn't get much out of it. And, and with a lot of those e-commerce products, then it's really easy to. The big mistake is not to to cut your losses. You're throwing good money after bad. And 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 a lot of e-commerce businesses are trying e-commerce service providers are trying to sign you up with your credit card, and it's a it's a slow death of a thousand cuts every every month. You get that uh, new cost on your credit card, you don't notice it. Every month you're thinking, oh, I really should cancel that. And I mean, I guess the the best advice I could give is look, just don't think twice. Just cancel the credit card subscription for that particular service. You know, if you really need it and miss it, you can always get it back later on. But you can't get those dollars back easy. That's right. Great, great advice. Um, that may have been that may have been the one thing I was going to ask you if you could distill your experience down to one thing that it takes to be successful. What would you say that would be? Oh, I don't know. I'd, I'd say it's you know it's being honest and providing great service. <laughs> um, but you've, it's actually you know I think it's marketing. You know I think really. Um, in, in terms of selling a product or a service, um, you can have the best product and service in the world 
and if it's not correctly marketed and and then sold um you know your guys and girls who are, who are delivering that service and product they you know they don't have anything to do so you need to get those orders it's a it's a it's a chain and it starts with the sale excellent answer of course that comes from a marketing guy um yeah. so uh half dan thank you so much for our time together where's the best place for people to learn more about jens hansen uh well i guess our website which is jens hansen dot yeah. dot com um it's uh it's a it's actually you know what's interesting we have now i'm, I'm kind of proud to say that we have taken my dad's name uh which is literally the danish equivalent of john smith there is at least a quarter of a million of them in Denmark. Uh, and we are now on Google, by any measure, the most famous Jens Hansen in the world. So uh, if I've done one thing for the legacy of my father, it's I've made him the most famous John Smith on the planet. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Well, wonderful. I have to tell you, uh, if, if, if your uh, friend Peter helped you write the script for your... Um, on your about us page on that video uh or if you came up with that on your own uh, the video yeah we love the video yeah yeah it's fantastic yeah. It, most excellent uh visual display of artisan craftsmanship you 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 just spot on i i i want to come visit you we are coming to new zealand in the next 10 years and i want to come to your shop and i and i want to obviously shake your hand and um, see what you guys are all about, but excellent work. That's great. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Yes. Thanks for our time together. Uh, thanks. If you're listening, uh, be sure to, uh, give us a rating on iTunes and, uh, share this with friends. Um, that would be wonderful. And, uh, go check out Jens Hansen. That's J E N S Hansen, H A N S E N.com. And, uh, check out the, uh, Elvish, uh, translator tool. That's pretty cool. And uh, until we talk again, half Dan, thank you again, and we will talk soon. Thanks for listening to e-commerce in the trenches brought to you by Unific. Visit unific.com to start turning your receipts into revenue through highly segmented order confirmation campaigns and more. And more.